hydro seeding and uh, weed pulling and we needed some water. So we're working on uh, that during the summertime. We'll be continuing with the restoration in the fall. Um, I did engage our environmental group and they don't have a plan completely prepared for the uh, planting, but those details are forthcoming and I asked them for that. Let me know as soon as you get that together because I want to report it out. Um, make sure that you, when you get a chance, look at se.com. There's several rebate programs for summer. They include rebates for pool pumps, uh, window air conditioner, not conditioners, swamp coolers, or coolers and then um, refrigerators too. So if you are uh, getting ready to purchase any of those items, please check the se.com website so you can get the rebates if you're interested. Okay. Do you have the rebates for full air conditioning systems, replacements? You know, commercial, are you looking at commercial? No, residential. Residential, I don't believe there's something for air conditioning, but you can go ahead and go on there. They have a lot of different models listed, so you can go on there and see if there's something that, that would uh, uh, apply. So, um, and if you don't find that, let me know and I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. But that's something to definitely take advantage of. Yeah, we'll take okay. Thank well, you. you do have demand response, right? Yes, and we do have demand response. That's a couple hundred bucks a month. Yes. And that, that is a air conditioner cycling program where you can put the, uh, there's a device that they put on your air conditioner. So in peak hours when we have a, a demand response meeting, we need more power for, you know, to push the load. Uh, your, your air conditioner will cycle off. It won't, it won't turn the fan off, but it turns the air conditioning part off. So you'll get a little bit of air anyway. So if you're not home during the day, you know, it, it's typically around 4 o'clock when our really peak heat periods are, but uh, you know, just something to consider in, in, in your right jacket, a couple hundred dollars. It's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it only turns off for less than an hour. Yes. And sometimes it, it's a couple times a year and you're still getting your game. I don't think my jacket would turn <laughs> off, so there you go. So yeah, those programs, is, they're worth looking into. I mean, uh, SED has programs, the gas company has programs, there's a lot of different programs you just have to Go to the website and, and read about it. If you have any questions, you're welcome to contact. And that works with any air conditioner. You don't have to buy a new one. And that's right. If you're existing air conditioner, you just come out for a little thing on it. And exactly. Yeah, that's a radio control. What they do is they cycle your condenser. So the FAU inside the house will keep on the air condenser. And even that's only for an hour because they, they have enough people they can, you know. Yeah, I, was, I was just, I'll check on air conditioning because when you go to buy it for anyone, quick education, anyone, you're going to put a new air conditioning system in your house. A contractor come out and give you a, a bid, and the tonnage is how big the system is, which is synced up to the size of your house. But then the thing for the energy efficiency is called a sear, and they can quote you a 80, a 90, 95. And the higher the sear, the more efficient the unit is, and usually just rebates. But I've got three different houses right now putting new systems, and I was just wondering Excellent. if you told them sure. to get a rebate. Yeah, if you want to get the, mo get the models from the website, if you don't find it, let me know, and I'll give it to you. My yes. question to you is. This is only for house use. What if you have a pump? What happens? We do have pump cycling rebates too for uh, irrigation. Because if you turn my pumps off, electricity comes back on, that doesn't come on. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a problem. So are they being that way? Or how are they regulated? I'll go ahead and get the information for you because, okay, it, because is, it is a. No, I mean, if it shuts off in the middle of the night. Yeah. You, I've waited for the half a day. Right, right. Unless I got they're, they're, they're I have those systems on two buildings today, uh -huh. and they normally cycle when the energy use is highest. So they would never do it at night. It would be in the middle well, it doesn't make any difference whether it's a day or night to me. I mean, I've got water running 24 hours a day. I can't shut off. Yeah, well. Right? So, I mean, if they shut it off, then yeah. who's yeah. responsible for but this day? You have to okay. sign up for it. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'll give the information for you because I know there's a lot of people that have orchards. Thank you. Okay. okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Okay. Um, what you have in front of you, uh, a couple of flyers, um, two June programs we have added uh, that you did not get last time, Joyful Noise and a Wind Chime Art activity for the kids. Um, these are just last minute things. They uh, cost us a little bit of money, but we're, we're of course happy to have more programs. In addition to that, the two after that are July programs, a Bagpipes of Scotland program, and a uh, science program. This, these are the first of many uh, summer reading program um, uh, programs that are, that are coming up next month. We're, of course, we could add more 
and the, the first meeting we have in July, I will tell you all about that. And the last flyer I gave you was something I got from the another county department, uh, Community and Senior Services. It's just a job opportunity. It's just a reminder of one of these things that we have floating around the library at the circulation desk uh, that anyone can just grab when they come in. Uh, other than that, everything is going very well. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you going to put the, the school program down in the county journal? Or so I'll send you the new programs are already in. They're already in the country. Uh, I have a question. Um, do we have our new children's librarian yet? Her name is Amanda Kane, and she has been hired by the county. She, um, every, every new county employee, in the library department anyway, goes on a, a wonderful two-week adventure to other libraries, and they do training with other children's librarians in this case, and uh, they get their years of experience, and. Um, they get to just hang out and see how libraries are run elsewhere. And they take all their experience and bring them back here to the Acting community. So she should be here next week. That's with a C. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce Sherman, Supervising Planner for the Ordinance Study Section. Uh, we manage the ordinance amendments that the County Board of Supervisors request for your Title 22 and Title 21 subdivision. Um, Larry and I are here to talk about the Animal Facility Ordinance. I have a handout, I'm going to hand out in a minute. Larry has a presentation that will take about five minutes to get through. I'm going to ask that we just hold questions until he gets through the informational, the information that he has. Um, we also were at Agua Dulce last week, and at that meeting when we shared this, it was uh, it was suggested that animal care and control be here as well because they deal with the licensing and uh, of animal facilities. Title 22 in the planning department really deal with just the land use and the zoning issues. Okay? And Larry's going to kind of go over that and the handout will sort of divide the responsibilities between the two departments. But essentially what I want to leave you with is that this particular ordinance is simply, it's not necessarily expansion. I've heard that term a few times, I was doing the outreach with this, and it's not expansion by any means. Okay? Right now, what is going on with the, the Title 22 planning ordinance is we don't have the same uses that Animal Care and Control uses for their licensing. Okay? So, in Title 22 currently, we have the term dog counts okay, that are allowed in A2. And you can have 100 dogs in A2 right now. If Animal Care and Control allows it, it's allowed. And the zoning code and the planning department can't do a thing about it. Okay? So keep that in mind, number one. Number two, um, all this ordinance is trying to do is come up with the exact same uses that Animal Care licensed them under. And we're also trying to clarify the issue of breeding which was a little bit different between our code and animal code. And we're going to explain all that, okay? But keep in mind that the whole purpose of this ordinance is to make sure that Title 10, the Animal Care control and Control Code, and Title 22, the Planning and Zoning Code, are consistent with each other, which right now they're not. And the way that we discovered this was through a motion through the board. You'll recall a few years ago, Supervisor Antonovich's office uh, presented a motion on puppy mills. And you remember that puppy mills were a huge issue in this county a few years ago. Okay. We started working on that ordinance in the planning department. And we came up with the puppy mill ordinance. And we took the whole package and had a public hearing in front of the commission. And during that hearing, this was probably three years ago now, during that hearing, the planning commission and staff discovered that our code, the planning code, wasn't consistent with the animal care code. So we were trying to address an issue, puppy mills, that our code didn't even have means to, consistently with Title 10. And when that was discovered during the public hearing, the commission just basically closed the books on that ordinance. They denied it, and they asked staff to, it sounds like we need to get our codes consistent with the animal care code. Staff, please come back with an ordinance that does that. Now, my staff and I 
We're extremely busy for the last three years working on something called the technical update to Title 22. You've all heard me present on that project and how enormous it was. So if you have any idea how big that project was, you'll know why it took us three years to come back from puppy mills to animal care to, to this animal facility ordinance that we have now. I'm going to shut up and let Larry present. I'll present, I'll hand out some handouts while he's doing that. The last thing I want to say though is we'll have animal care here to answer your licensing questions. And also I have a ton of business cards on him. If you have any questions and if you have any letters, emails or otherwise, Larry and I want them. That's part of the public record and we will make sure that they're part of the package with the Planning Commission. We don't hide anything here. Okay? It's all out in the open and so that's, that's what I, I will extend to you. If you have any comments or anything, please take my card, give me a call, take Larry's card and give him a call and let's talk this out. Okay? I'm going to hand it over to Larry. Uh, thank you again uh, for having us here tonight. Uh, so I'll just be doing a brief presentation on the proposed animal facility ordinance. So the purpose of the animal facility ordinance is to align uh, regional planning's requirements with the requirements of the Title 10 Animal Code. So we intend to so align... Can everyone hear me? Larry, can you hear me? Larry, can you Okay. So uh, again, the purpose of the Animal Facility Ordinance is to align regional planning requirements with the requirements of the Title 10 Animal Code. Now we propose to do this in uh, three ways. First, we'll establish the zones for the animal facility use will be allowed. Second, we will create new development standards that will regulate animal facilities within the A2 Heavy Agricultural Zone. Finally, we'll create a new definition for animal facility within Title 22 that will mimic the existing uh, definition of animal facility as within the Title 10 uh, Animal Code right now. So those are our main goals. So first let's talk a little bit about the establishing the zones. Right now, regional planning regulates the establishment of land uses through zoning. So that's the whole purpose of our department, to look at land uses. If you refer to item number 7 in your handout, you'll notice that the existing code allows dog kennels as permitted use in zones A-2, heavy agriculture, and M-1, light industrial zones. In the zones uh, CM, uh, commercial industrial, it requires a conditional use permit, which includes a public hearing uh, for that use in order to allow it. So th these are the current requirements uh, if, if an operator wants to propose a dog kennel. The animal facility is defined as a boarding and breeding facility, and a dog kennel is a boarding facility. So through the zoning, we're basically trying to mimic the same requirements as a dog kennel. So that's why you see the same type of zoning in that chart. These, the zoning and the regulations for uh, dog kennels have been the same since the 1930s. So they've required the exact same type of permits and uh, we're not proposing to change that. So over the last 80 years, we've been requiring this and when say an animal facility operator wants to propose a dog kennel, they would come to regional planning, we would take a look at the zoning, see is there land use allowed, if it is, and if there's any kind of other things related to planning, such as building heights, parking requirements, any types of those that are land use related, we take a look at those requirements. As far as the, the regulation, so if those if it meets our basic requirements, we would approve it, then it would need to go still through the Department of uh, Animal Care and Control in order to check to make sure it meets their requirements in terms of size requirements, any kind of anything related to the, the number of dogs and how they would, they would operate at that facility. So they need to still uh, clear their requirements before they can get that license for that use. Uh, next I'd like to discuss a little bit about the, the new development standards, which uh, I know has been a lot of concern for a lot of people in terms of the numbers. So when it comes to the number of cats and dogs permitted at an animal facility, again, uh, the Department of Animal Care Control has specific requirements that the development 
uh, needs to meet for each animal before they can get their license. The numbers that you see there for uh, 20, 50, and 100 dogs, that's uh, on item number 9 for the new development standards. Those numbers are mimicking the, the categories that, that the licenses Animal Care and Control uses. So we're basically copying those numbers. In terms of the acreages of uh, one acre, between one to two and a half acres, and two, two and a half acres and above, those requirements were based on an analysis of existing licensed animal facilities. And the goal was to look at what kind of uh, lot sizes the existing animal facilities have and figure out, okay, so this is considered kind of a base that for what, what's out there right now. And we're trying to set a maximum threshold. The numbers are not intended to allow additional dog kennels. The goal was to allow whatever's out there right now, what normally would be permitted based on code, uh, they could still go up to that amount. Uh, but again, it doesn't guarantee that they're going to get it. They still have to go through animal care and control's requirements to make sure they meet those regulations. And also the, uh, let's see. So again, th these requirements are just basically maximums. It does not guarantee that they're going to meet those amounts. If, if they do, can we go please say that? Okay. So, so let's say, for example, an animal facility operator does want to propose additional dogs or cats beyond those numbers, that, those thresholds. They could still apply for it, but it would require a discretionary review, which is a conditional use permit, and it would have to go through a public hearing, and it would be open to public comment. That, that public hearing would be presented before the Regional Planning Commission, and then they would take in any information brought in by the public, they would have to consider all the information before they can make a decision, not only from our department, but also from animal care <coughs> controls recommendations and any other uh, departments involved in the review of facilities. So next, I'd like to go over the definition. As I mentioned earlier, uh, an animal facility is currently defined in Title 10 uh, as a boarding and breeding facility. This is one of the main reasons that we're bringing this up today is because right now in our existing code, we only have dog kennels listed as a permitted use in zones A2. So say an animal, or sorry, a dog kennel operator wants to come in and file for, an, for a dog kennel facility, we would basically look at that use. Uh, we would be able to permit it, but based on the definition of the animal uh, facility use, once they go to uh, animal care control that could potentially uh, allow them to do boarding and breeding. So that's why we're adding in the breeding type use. In terms of the numbers, they're still going to be regulated. Whatever animal care control has been using uh, for their requirements is still going to continue to use those same numbers. It's not, these requirements are not going to be creating an opportunity for additional use other than what's currently allowed. And, and that's a key point that I'd like to make is that Breeding was the one thing that was not clarified in our code because it didn't allow it. Because we had kennels, but we didn't have breeding in that maybe each zone. Okay? But when they when the operator would go to animal care and get their licensing as an animal facility, they're gonna allow to, to, to board or be a kennel as well as breeding. So we had no way to control that or know at the planning department anyway. And that's one thing, if there, you know, I don't believe this is expansion, but we are clarifying that breeding is allowed in the A2 zone, okay? And that's a key part of this particular ordinance, because before it was all fuzzy, it was like, well, we had kennels, but it wasn't clarified that they could actually breed there. And our enforcement officers, we get a complaint that somebody was breeding there, we'd be like, oh, we don't allow breeding in the A2 zone, <laughs> but we go out there, and they get a, they, they show us their license from animal facility from animal care and control. And what can we do then if they're licensing them as such? And they're the experts with animal care. We're not. Okay. So that's the key part of this ordinance. The development standards. Believe me, I, I'm a property owner. If I see a hundred dogs, and, and I think, oh my god, I think the same way. Believe me. But I think when animal care gets up here, they're going to tell you that 100 dogs is not the norm. It's by far not even close to the norm. 
And the other thing I'd like to leave you with is that we're talking about the A2 zone. And the A2 zone is primarily a heavy agricultural zone. Yes, you can have a house. Yes, but that house is actually accessory to the ag that's going on there. No. No. What, I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is you get a farmhouse with your A2 land. No. You get a farmhouse. Not near you. No. Okay, it's your primary use. It's your primary use. No. Your primary use is your house. Your primary use is your house. You so primary use is your house. house. You have a house with a lot of acreage. But you know what? Not necessarily a lot. It may be only two acres. <laughs> no, the one point I'd like to make, though, is that zoning is not discriminatory. Okay? And if you're permitted uses, listen. We're listening, but you're not allowing us to ask any questions. We will. At the end, we'll get to say. The A2 zone, look it up. It's a heavy agricultural zone. Parcel size. It's a heavy agricultural Look zone. The permitted use there, somebody could grow hogs by right next door to you, and you can't say a thing. Okay? And it's because that's the A2 zone. It's heavy A. And everyone has the same property rights that you do. You want your house on an A2 zone? Fine. But some people want to do a heavy A, an A2 zone. And that's what the A2 zone is for. Not you. That, that's, that is an argument to be had. Somewhere, but not on this ordinance. Okay? This is an agricultural use of dog facilities, animal facilities in agricultural use. And we're zoning it in an agricultural zone. Okay? So I understand, I understand that ag, you're not using A2 as a heavy ag use in this community and that people like their acreage. But we have to understand the zoning code is about permitted uses and discretionary uses. And every one of you who bought property in the A2 zone were well aware of the uses that are permitted in that zone. And, and, and if you're saying you have more property rights than your neighbor, I don't think that's the crux of what these communities are about. I would make a couple quick comments there. My understanding of your mission in life is to make everything consistent is to make sure that what is in existence here is in existence here in different titles so that there is no confusion between the two. That's pretty much what you've indicated. In my professional life, yes. Right, in your professional life. <laughs> well, in now, this effort. In this effort, yes. What you may have done is raise some issues that we weren't really that aware of in existence only or something that could happen that maybe most people weren't aware already existed. Um, but then you're up here trying to fight the fight, and I think you're going to be out of your element in that. Well, I, I, I don't want to fight anybody. All, 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 I'm, tra all I'm trying to do well, is... Well, let's, let's, let's just move on. Right. I'm trying to do with it. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Let, me, let, me, let me get this back under control. Is the presentation done? Almost. Just, uh, right. Let him finish before you make any more comments, because it's just going to be kind of conflictive here, and then we'll, we'll hit you with our questions. And there's going to be quite a few, so we've got some time for questions. Okay. So, so a, a quick clarification in terms of terminology. So, an animal facility does not include animal shelters. Animal shelters are, as defined in the animal care and controls uh, definitions, a facility that is. Uh, that is operated by their department. Also, uh, the terms uh, dog pound, animal rescue, and kennel are not defined in either Title 22 or uh, the Title 10 code. Uh, one of the terms that a lot of people have questions on was in terms of animal rescues. And based on the, on the definition, the, the closest thing that would fit that category is going to be uh, an animal facility use. If you look at, on your first page here, for <coughs> exist, number two, existing Title 10 definitions, the third item we have of the nonprofit humane organization animal facility. So this includes an animal facility operated by a bona fide charity in good standing with the provisions of Section 501 of the Internal Revenue Code, where animals are kept and adopted, uh, are kept for adoption or sanctuary. So an animal rescue would fit under this category, and as a animal facility, as this definition applies, would still be subject to the requirements of the animal facility ordinance. 
And again, they still have to go through the Department of Animal Care Control to make sure that their, their regulations are met before any kind of license is issued. Uh, in terms of the regulations, uh, again, some other comments received uh, from the communities have been concerns regarding uh, noise uh, issues and odor issues. If there's any types of issues related to facilities that are directly uh, a result of, of animals at those facilities, then you need to contact the Department of Animal Care and Control so they can follow up with any noise or odor issues that are specific to, to dogs. If there's other issues uh, at those facilities that are non-animal related, so if it's say from equipment, generators, things of that nature, that would then be regulated by the Department of Public Health, so you need to contact them for their, uh, their assistance in trying to address those issues. So uh, again, I just want to emphasize that the main goal of this, of this ordinance is basically to make sure that our requirements are in consistency with Animal 10's uh, Title 10 of code. We're not creating additional uses for uh, so that they can increase the existing numbers. These are similar to dog kennels that have been uh, licensed out of those communities for the past 80 years. However they've been regulated over those 80 years, they're still going to continue to require the same types of requirements. We're basically just making sure that those, those items are going to be consistent in terms of definition-wise and how they're regulated. So those are the goals. Thank you. Okay. Um, are both of you going to be fielding questions? Yeah. We also, we also, I, I should say, we have animal care control here. Um, why, don't, why don't we field a few questions with you guys first? Okay. And then we'll let them come up and uh, answer it. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is let the council go first with questions. We'll start with Jackie. Do you have any? Uh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, First of all, I want to clarify, the 10, 15, 100 is not codified in Title 10. Those numbers do not exist in the code. Is that not correct? 20, 15, 100? 10, 20, I'm sorry, 20. 15. Right. That, that's, that's one of the figures that's proposed on this ordinance, the, the development centers. But those numbers originally came from the numbers that are issued in terms of the licenses. I, I, don't control. I understand that. But there is nothing in Title 10 that drives the 20, 50, and 100. Is that not correct? Not to my knowledge. It's their licensing. Okay. It's their license. That's how they segment licensing. But it, I don't, know, I don't know how they do that. Yeah, I don't know administratively or by code how they do that. Well, I've looked at the code, and I have not found these numbers. Yeah. Title I trust you. Yeah, I, I, but I, so I'm well, asking. I'm telling you, I don't know. Okay. That's, that, okay, I just asked a question. I'm not trying to be, that's, that's a great answer. Because that's consistent with what I saw. The reason that becomes important is because just because for 80 years, animal, by the way, 80 years predates CEQA, predates the idea of impacts, predates the idea of one acre parcels in the middle of Acton. Trust me. I was looking at plat maps today of California going back and at Los Angeles in the 1880s. They were, the parcels were one square mile. Okay. But the way she said works is you but, don't consider uh, anything that happened before. I I'm think sorry. she's talking at this point. Okay? So the reason it becomes important is because just because they've been issuing licenses with these numbers that are not codified anywhere, they're completely discretionary. As a discretionary permit, they're absolutely subject to CEQA, whether or not they have chosen to implement CEQA anyway. That's a problem I have. Now the other problem is that when, when I've spoken with some animal control officers, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this, the, the noise and odor issue, if a, fall, a phone call comes in, a, an officer might be, if they're able to, they'll go out and, and check. And if there is noise, then they will write a letter to the kennel owner, or the animal facility owner, or the breeder owner, whatever the term is you want to use. And then, but, but nothing else happens beyond that. There isn't any action that ever occurs in response to any neighbor complaints for noise. And I wanted to confirm that because that's what I understood from my conversations with an animal control officer. If, if you'd like me to answer that, that, that is incorrect. If there is a um, process. Uh, you can go on the DACC Department of Animal Care Control website and there's a noise complaint uh, application on there, you you send us the noise complaint, a letter goes out to the to the single the single family dwelling or the business. Right. You get confirmation of that. 
if they get they're given seven, seven to ten days to correct the problem. Are still here? No. No. Um, okay. And Rick left. Okay. And I know Rick had some other information he wanted to give us. He said that there was yeah. an update. Well, th th this is really disturbing. I noticed, okay, what is on the board package right now is the same June 2nd letter that we saw last at the last town council meeting that caused the ruckus. It said, well, this community was committed, it was, the commitment was made to this community that residential uses and animal uses and accessory uses would be exempt from the SCA requirements and that would be written in the AD plan, okay? And that's what we had understood the motion, the board of supervisors voted on the motion, and then, um, and that was our understanding, and then the uh, county council came up with a report dated 2 June that said, well, we don't believe any of that should be in the AV plan, it'll just be in the ordinance when that ordinance comes back. Now the problem with that is the language in the ordinance is so strong and protective, it requires land dedications and everything else in the SCA, that um, I don't believe that there's a chance you're going to get an exemption in the ordinance once the AV plan is final. Now, we had a meeting last Friday and talked about this with Supervisor uh, uh, Norm Hickling and Adele Viscara, uh, Supervisor Antonio, which is planning deputy. And uh, we asked for a footnote to be included in the AV plan, and we also asked for a statement of intent that the, that the Board of Supervisors make it clear that it is their intention in adopting this plan that, that uh, residential uses and uh, animal uses would be exempt from SCA ordinance requirements. None of those things are in the board package whatsoever. But what is in the board package is another letter dated January 11 from regional planning that says, we saw that you put this element in your original motion in November, basically that if the specific plan in the western EOA area yeah, is consistent with the AV plan, it doesn't have to have an AV plan amendment, which is fine. But what that, that simple language morphed into uh, two or three new paragraphs added to the AV plan that says that they can do anything they want and they can change any land use that they want in the AV plan in that specific area um, as, long as, uh, as long as certain constraints are met, as long as the total area to develop land doesn't increase, and as long as unmitigated uh, traffic impacts, uh, significant unmitigated traffic impacts don't occur, which means but basically, they could build salt a home ranch. They could build it out completely, all with commercial. And as long as they mitigate traffic, it could still have significant impacts. The reason I bring all this up is it's not relevant to Acton, but they took a simple one or two line sentence that Supervisor Antonovich had adopted in the motion and morphed it into something that completely changes the AV plan, adopted it in the AV plan, and we can't get the one line that was word for word what was in the motion put into the AV plan. I am very disturbed by this. And if it goes tomorrow, I don't think that we're going to get a homeowner exemption for the SEAs when that ordinance comes back. And so you'll be giving up two thirds, three, three fourths of your land when you want to build on it. Any development, that means a pipe corral, that means anything, even brush corners. Okay. Well, um, at this point right now, I'm sorry that we didn't get to speak to uh, Norm this evening. Right. But I think um, tomorrow, what time is the board meeting? I think it starts at 9 or maybe 10. Uh, the next downtown, correct? Yeah. I think, what I don't know if it's from this library, but you have a way to participate and give testimony. Uh, if it's not at this library, it's at the Lancaster Library. Well, in downtown, a little bit. I'm sorry, there will be no more questions taken until open forum than someone can speak. We, we've got to get our committee updates done. I'm sorry. Um, at this point, then, I, I think what we need to do is possibly go to the meeting, um, but it, you know, another day. It's in LA. It's in LA. Um, at 9 a.m., you said? It's either 9 or 10. Tom, do you know? I'm not sure. I'd like to know. Yeah, who's going to be, if anyone from the town council is going to be attending the meeting, as the town council has been opposed, was opposed to the city's without this language being in the Antelope Barrett's ballot plan, and without the council's, you know, support in holding the county accountable to what they have agreed to do, um, it, it's not going to happen. And, you know, 
my property wasn't previously in a C area, and now it is in a C, and, you know. We, we understand that, and as, as council members, we, we do as much as we can. Right. Last week was. I'm in the same boat. Okay, I was not in an SCA, I am in an SCA. Uh, we've been working on this, and they tell us things, and they don't follow through. I don't know why. So we need to hold them accountable, you know, and to, um, well, well, you know, to uphold uh, what to... they've been telling the community all along. And the night before, you know, the midnight, the midnight hour before, you know, before the Board of Supervisors is going to adopt this plan in, you know. So we, had a, we took, four of us took the day off on Friday which is costly because we all work. I understand um, that. And we went and we had a personalized meeting with Adele and Norm. And we were given promises at Sun. We went back and Jackie immediately uh, wrote up what we had agreed upon that, that they were going to present and put was in there. Was that memorialized in an email to them? Or? Yes, it was. It was. And uh, here we are again. So tomorrow's a deadline. Nothing was put in there. Norm was here tonight. His other and conveniently you know, that took a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you know, I got a suggestion. So, <clears throat> Norm has been leaving at nine o'clock. Yeah. We need to get him whatever we got a problem that got to do with Norm. We need to get him before he gets out of here. We need to put him towards the top of the, the list, okay? Right. Because we're not getting anything back. With this, so he was disgusted because he's going. Now we got a, we we ended up with now another one of these that we've been arguing over. Uh, time limit. They, never, they, they don't give us enough time for this. Yeah. It's over and over again that this is happening. It's worse now than it's ever been. Yeah. Well, I will um, make the meeting tomorrow. My seven-year-old daughter will learn more about politics. What time is that meeting tomorrow? Yeah. He's saying that um, they made the same promise again uh, that they made earlier was that they would address this in the when the ordinance comes up before Donovich, Donovich leaves office. But as Jack stated, is if you read the A B plan, there's no way this ordinance is ever going to reflect what we're talking about because I don't believe it is. They, they plan so specifically uh, prohibits it. So it's it's kind of like how do you generate a law that violates the Constitution? You can't. So I, I don't believe it's going to get fixed. Norm right. told me today that that, that the, they were going to read a statement of intent into the record, which you know. Uh, well, I typed one up for him, but it was supposed to be part of the board package, and it's not. Nothing's yeah. in writing. Nothing. So, so you know. Well, like the gentleman that was here standing, you remember? Just a, just a few months ago, we were at the yeah. <coughs> Rural Town Council meeting arguing over the same type of a thing. We won't change this. Do you remember that? And, 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 and sure as hell, when as soon as we, we did drop it, they changed it. We never did get it back in, the, in the, what we wanted in that damn thing. You remember the, what I'm talking about? You're talking about the AV plan. Yeah. The address tomorrow. It's at the board of right next to the regional planning where it's the Kenneth Hahn, Holland yeah. administration right next door on Temple Street. Well, it had to do with they were using water from 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 one place to another across county line. Oh, that I didn't realize. So, Chris, if you attend tomorrow, will you, you know, as the president of the town council, hold them to accountable to what you're reading? What I certainly got to well, I can make a motion that he represents the town council to the best of his ability on this issue. But I, I think we ought to do something for that meeting tomorrow night. Or whenever. Second it. Tomorrow. Yeah, I'll second that motion. And I'll represent myself as a property owner. Who's I will too. I'll be there. You'll we'll be there too. Okay. Jack, you know, it's difficult to do. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Got okay. a point with the lawyer. Well, I don't know that I can either. No. We're going we to i got to be in Bakersfield tomorrow myself. This, this is what happens to us all the time. It's at the 11th hour. Yeah. Oh. And we're struggling to figure out. Can we get there? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. Well, why can't you guys write, put it in writing, and all of you sign it? We've and done that. It. We do that all the time. That was what was done on Friday after the meeting. Yes. And here we are with 
Well, it was just an email. We didn't all sign a letter. Yeah, if you sign a letter, have, it, have, it, so. have somebody uh, notarize it that you all sign before, a letter. Before <laughs> 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Because then it can be submitted in the record. Before 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And it's in the morning. record that yeah. the, these were guarantees made to you and you all heard it. Unfortunately, the old-fashioned way of face-to-face -face is probably the most productive. I don't know how we can do that by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Right. Well, you're all here now. <laughs> well, yeah. it being handwritten. Yes, why not? Yeah. I would say I'll be calm down there if we can go. Also. All right. It's um, the same to the point. Side. Anything else, Jackie? Uh, I'm <laughs> I think I want to say more. I'm just upset. <laughs> Tuesday, June 9th, 35 of us got on the bus and went to the LA County meeting, or the LA meeting um, for the High Speed Rail Board. Another eight to ten people showed up and drove. So we had about 50 people representing Acton and Aquadulce. We had six re representatives from Fresno, Kings County, Kern County, and Carcoran. And where? Carcoran. Okay. Corcoran. 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 Sorry. Corcoran. I didn't think that made sense. But we stayed there for the whole shebang, the majority of us. Everybody on the bus stayed. There was a lot of comments made to the High Speed Rail Authority. We got a tremendous amount of publicity overall, as far as I'm concerned. We were on TV, we had <coughs> newspaper articles, just a, a flurry of a lot of uh, publicity about it. And of course, then afterwards, we had uh, Chairman Richard giving his you know, scenario um, on their website that of course, everything is moving along fine, and they're under construction, <laughs> which they've posted posted on their website now that they're actually starting the bridge in Fresno County. I don't know how they can do that legally, but anyway, Friday, um, while well, the rest of the town council members went to meet with Norm, I went and followed the biologist. He was here again for three hours in Acton. He did exactly the same properties as we have followed him before. Um, he told me, and because I was there alone, Jackie, he talked a little, but I also had the new PR guy there who tried to keep me away from him. Yeah, okay. But he didn't do very well. Um, just said that he was looking for uh, late blooming plants. And the one thing that, that he did see that he didn't see before was the San Diego jackrabbit with the long ears and the black tail. Oh. Uh, scared oh, maybe, one. They'll, maybe they'll say this. I don't know. He, he was shocked. He's like, uh. <laughs> okay. We heard the train was coming in really fast. Bye. And then exactly the, the day after our Tuesday meeting, well, actually that night in Washington, D.C., the U.S. House of Representatives voted unanimously to um, to um, fund the nullify the, the funding. Yes. Federal Imagine. funding for high speed rail. Right, which started with the Federal Railroad Association, correct? Administration. Administration. Right. So. That's the first time it's passed unanimously through the House of Representatives. Um, our representative from California that brought this up is Jeff Denham, and this is the third time he's brought it before the U.S. House. He did a good job. Somehow they voted unanimously to nullify that. Now it goes to the Senate, and of course, um, Mr. Richard, Chairman Richard, is saying, it won't pay, it won't make it out of Senate, and then I, if I understand, Obama has to sign it too. So, who knows what's going to happen there? Um, I have tons of stuff, but I don't want to keep everybody here all night. Um, Ron Tudor of Tudor Perini, they had an excellent article in the Fresno Bee today, and I would highly suggest everybody go to the Fresno Bee. Dot com and take a look at the article that's written there. Ron Tudor is wanting to negotiate with the Rail Authority for compensation to his company because there's been a delay in building the train. 
uh, Tutta Perini is famous for this. They are a big nationwide company. And he said he has invested $10 million in new equipment to comply with the clean air regulations. And all of his equipment has been sitting there idle in Fresno on the construction site that they demoed that took out those little foxes. Um, <laughs> if you all remember that. CEO Jeff Morales said the delay in acquiring the properties um, justifies the increased cost. Oh. Awesome. They um, need to purchase a hundred, uh, I'm sorry, a thousand seventy nine properties and it only has purchased two hundred and fifty seven. The deadline for them doing this again is September 2017. And again, today, Chairman Richards said no private money yet has been invested, which, okay. But he said he thinks that the private money will materialize soon once the first leg is running. Well, you don't get it. You don't get to start the first leg until you follow Prop 1A. Yeah. So, interesting stuff. I spent the day at the office today reading, um, just because I haven't had time with all the other stuff's going on with the high-speed rail, but I will post some of this stuff on our webpage and also on Facebook, and I would really encourage people to go read some of this, these articles I'm saying in the community, and we'll just keep plugging away. That's, that's enough for today. You know, when we went to the meeting last, for the rally in the meeting last Tuesday, uh -huh. did, did anyone pay attention to the gentleman that spoke um, before we were able to go speak and was talking about the bonds? It seemed like he was in charge of raising bond money. And, right. and the chairman was saying, well, what's been going on with the bond money? And he said, well, we've, we've spoken to individuals, companies and such, and they said they would give us the money, but they want us to guarantee that we meet Prop 1A before they'll give us the money. Right. And the chairman said, well, that'll be part of the risk that they have to take. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, was, I was sitting there, and I've got a bad hearing, but I was listening to this guy. He was a little guy. He wasn't very big. He was talking. And I don't know if you remember him talking. They had this, this, this conversation going back and forth. <laughs> I didn't hear any of that. I did well, not hear it. Because that's, that's in my whole contention. If you avoid CQA, you get no cross line. Exactly. And here, especially. Okay, I'm going to look for it because you know what? It wasn't at the meeting. It was. I was going to say. Was going, it was on the last posted board meeting in, what was it, May 15th or 16th? Oh, I was going uh, to was watch. Watching, was going to that. Uh, I got to check that check, out. Check that out. It's the very last posted board there meeting. That's where I, uh, where I saw this guy okay. who was listening. Okay. So and that was, it was very interesting. The other thing in Tuesday's meeting, the High Speed Rail Authority Board approved $700 million to the existing attorneys to continue their representation over the next seven years. $700 million. Just for attorneys. Right. Just for attorneys. Yeah. How are they going to put it in right No, it, it was $700, and I made sure that I no, knew that. No, I'm not doubting. I just didn't. I, I, I That's didn't. almost a billion dollars. I've never even heard of people that. And I want to know how much they've already got. Yeah. You know? Just That's saying. interesting. But it, was, okay. it takes forever to find this information. It's not readily available. Right. Okay. Um, That's one, it. One thing else at the meeting. Um, at least three of the board members, other than Chairman Richard, did commit to come to the, to the community. And that's supposed to be working through Michelle that she arranges for them to come out within the next 60 days. That was part of the presentation by our supervisor and Tonovitz's transportation guy to try to get it back so they work with the communities more within the next 60 days. And uh, three of the board members committed to do that and asked Michelle to coordinate that. They lied. Who we'll were the three? Uh, yeah, that's, that's the problem. You know. <laughs> All I do. Who were the three? Vice Chairman uh, Trish or Troy or whatever her name is, and the dark-headed one on the left. The female on the female, left. Yeah. The two females, wasn't it? The two yeah. females yeah, and one other guy. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see if it comes to light or not. Um, you know, I, rem I remember the thing I forgot. 
<laughs> yeah. back to planning. Just you were there. We went and we pulled the, the map. Uh, we saw the landscape plan that had been submitted to MDT, uh, and it was dated the end of February. And there is still a drive-through on that project. Right. Sorry. On the country club. And it was approved. Primo. No, it's not. It's, st it's still there. It's so it hasn't been changed since that time. Well. No, it was submitted in February. Right. After this, we asked to have the After we asked to change, okay. So, okay. so that's just... And, so just... and just FYI, there was um, a correspondence that came in. I, I gave it to Catherine, and it's the planning department requesting copies of any letters that we read, uh, had written previously, and I believe it's the minutes is what they were They want the for. minutes from the July 2014 regarding to Taco, regarding Regarding Taco Bell, they're reviewing that file. Taco Bell. Yeah. I thought it was the well, I don't remember it. I was on town council. I remember that. I had no, minutes. we're not asking for oh, okay. yeah. just, just an FYI. We don't know what it means, but just FYI. Um, rural town councils. Oh, uh, yeah. And that would be. Okay. Uh, Tom, I keep seeing all of these emails popping up that we're getting new registrations on the website. I saw three of them today. Don't get too excited. I fixed that. Those are people basically spamming the site. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I fixed that today. We shouldn't get too many of those. But it took me a while to figure out how they were actually doing it. But, uh, um, but yeah. So we have about 49, I think, registered oh, members. So it's that's going up a few every yeah. week. That's and that does not include the four or five of us today. They're just trying to sell you advertising. I mean, they're trying, it's, oh, just, oh. it's just advertising. It's just, it's just, it's, it's very oh. non for everybody. I don't know why they do it. Um, so we have new agendas on the website. It's going to hopefully grow into links where you can maybe find some information, like with the dog ordinance thing today. Mm -hmm. You click, clicked on the link, it would have taken, it took you to the ordinance page. Oh, cool. uh, we're going to try to expand on that a little more as we get going. To try to get that up a little earlier too, um, and then just what we spoke about earlier with Norm. I think we should take Norm, put him on the agenda right before the committee. Oh, okay. I and I'll so. send Norm an email saying, "Hey, we're going to be on every week. You're going to have me on at this time." Just give him standing. I uh, give him standing. We even move him up further than that. I do too. Well, he's not always here when we start, but he usually whenever, whenever he's here, hitting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, well, it's, it's, the only it's, it's important. Yes, you know, but we get. Before the committees, we usually don't spend more than uh, presentations can take days. Well, no, 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 no. The presentations will be before presentations. Okay. So. And that, that's yes, that's absolutely. Key. Okay. And that's only five or six minutes before he's That's Good. Okay. So what are the Okay. Yeah, the finance and means is done. Public works. I have no update on that. Uh, community standards and reform. Uh, community standards and reform. Uh, it's come along. We're going to be getting a meeting of my little subcommittee here together. The last meeting we had was fairly productive, not very well attended, and that's okay. I'm finding that Wednesdays is not a good day for people in active. I've been to that, you know, that in the past. To make conflicts, I may look at changing to Tuesdays for the meetings, because that was always kind of a, a slow day, but I'm still considering that. But uh, at the last meeting, spent time uh, looking at structure of the different uh, CSDs, how they're planning on putting it out section by section to the community for input. Uh, let's say uh, dog facilities, you know, the section that you know refer references that. Ask for comments on that, and probably throw out something as a draft. You know, how about a hundred on a half an acre? You know, so we'll get some comments back or something like that. I would never do that, but you know what I mean. And just a little more input on the community standards. That was part of the meeting yeah. that we spoke with feedback on um, Norm and Adele on Friday, and we talked about the uh, big box stores mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and formula restaurants. And what came from the meeting is that having an ordinance done um, because they generally will not do ordinances for specific areas. The ordinance would be county wide. So if we want to be going and try to, I don't want to say manipulate, but, but govern what type of stores can come into active, 
they wouldn't be able to do that in an ordinance, but they said it would be possible, or they thought it could be possible, to do it in our community standards. And so our, our community right. standards could be growing, not only with yes. dog ordinances, but with the big box stores and such. Right. And um, Norm was going to check into that and get back to us. Which yeah. would be, Did they say anything important. about the, the uh, drafts that you had from Sullivan? Uh, actually, specifically, Adele was going to uh, go straight to Solvang's website and download that and review it and see what kind of issues were on there. Uh, we had given them you know, some specifics that, you know, at minimum, we'd like to see CUPs for any buildings 5,000 square foot or greater. Um, you know, so it was kind of a wish list. Uh, we had talked about um, also, you know, governing um, stores that maybe would have a more than five locations within the state. We were talking about government. Those, those identified stores would be identified as stores with um, uniform menus. Um, most of their food is prepared for takeout, not for dining in. One of the um, items in the solving ordinance, which I thought was really a good identifiable characteristic, was restaurants that would, you would pay for the food after consumption, not prior to consumption. You know, no fast food restaurants would let you do that. <laughs> Right. So we were trying to um, have some sort of a good description of the difference between the fast foods with drive-throughs and, and other types of restaurants. And drive-throughs were something that we take into our community standards where they're just not allowed. So it looks like community standards is going to be our key. key thing. To well, come and post it if you get anything back, copying on it, and I'll put our work on a plan to look okay. for a section there as well. Yeah. So we're trying to. Identify that stuff. It looks. I think community standards is going to be our it's greatest big, tool, big tool for um, for keeping that in rural without having to go through these fights continually. They did say that uh, our community standards are not going to get around to them for quite a while. Is they're that, they're in process. Well, I know whether they were talking about all the the CSDs and all the ordinances that are in front of us. So we have time to figure this yeah. out. Correct. Yeah. yeah. We, I, if we get done in two years. I'd be thrilled. I'm targeting a year, but that ain't going to happen. No, Two years would be monumental. So, how many in that? Would all see about five or six? Ten. 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 Uh, so, it, but there was reasons for that. But the, it, it's just a lot of work, yes. and it's how often people can get together to yes. work. And the only thing I can caution you about having worked that entire ten years with that committee is that. No matter what it is that you want and you write into the CSD, staff can just wipe you out. And you know, it, it becomes such a battle. They don't care what you want. They care with what works in the county system. And uh, if they think something's going to set a precedent or give power to somebody else, watch them try to quash it. So you really have to be very strong. Constant and, challenge. And, yeah, and demand what you want and really push for it and, and be ready to compromise on a few things mm -hmm. like as we had. As to do, more so. plus. Yet I wonder how staff can take a simple line out of a motion, add an entire section to an AB, the AB general plan that changes everything. Because they want to. <laughs> because they want to and because they see certain ramifications and they don't want to deal with it. The same yeah. reason they want a hundred dogs on. Five acres. <laughs> 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 no, two and a half. We need to move on. Anyway, I'm yes. going to the meeting tomorrow. I need to get home. I've got lots of stuff I need to do. Um, I just shot four so hours or five. So, um, emergency response? Uh, nothing yet. It would be nice to get a hold of that kennel owner there that's in, you know, involved in the kennels. To, but the evacuation plan is a great idea. And animal care and control is going to be another good group to get involved in that. Okay. Um, beautification, illegal dumping. Thank you.